All right, let's talk about the statement of purpose letter, often known as the letter of explanation. This two to three pager can make or break your application, so it's important to give it your full attention. In this video, I'll explain what an SOP or LOE is, why it's important, and how to format your letter so that you have a better chance of getting a study permit approval. So let's get into the meats and potatoes of this video, and of course, I'll leave some timestamps below so you can jump to whichever section you want. So what is an SOP anyway? The statement of purpose or letter of explanation is an optional but highly recommended part of your study permit application for Canada. Essentially, it's your chance to talk about the driving force behind pursuing a particular program in Canada, as well as address any concerns that a visa officer might have about your intention to study here. The whole point is convincing the visa officer that you are a bona fide applicant. Writing one is important since it can increase your chances of an approval or it may be a crucial piece of evidence in court if your application is refused. Now, why should you write one? Well, Canada is a sought after country to pursue higher education. With thousands of students applying to study in Canada on a daily basis, a nicely written SOP becomes a major distinguishing factor. It also serves as a means to convince the visa officer that you will leave Canada at the end of your stay because a study permit, after all, is a temporary permit. Now, what should you include in your SOP? An SOP is usually made up of an introduction paragraph followed by several topic paragraphs and a conclusion. There is no one way to write an explanation letter because everyone's story and circumstances are unique. Just remember that the letter should be made to fit your situation and should explain in a clear way why you need to study in Canada to reach your long-term goals. Now let's move on to the most important part of this video and talk about the SOP format. Now the sample explanation letter you're about to see is actually my sister's SOP. Her study permit application just got approved and I'm so proud of her for doing everything herself. She was kind enough to share her letter as a means to educate and inform, but of course I've redacted and changed some of her personal details to protect her privacy. A word to the wise, this sample is only intended to serve as a guide and should not be treated as the standard. Remember that visa officers are searching for genuine explanations, and so copying this will hurt your chances of coming to Canada. Plus, it's also plagiarism. Make sure to be open and honest in your communications at all times and to back up any statements you make with evidence. I might need my glasses for this part. At first glance, you'll see at the top left include the following. So you have the date, your home country's visa application center address, salutation, and a header with your application details. For your intro, you want to give the visa officer an idea of who you are and a brief statement of your reason to study in Canada. You can include information such as your full name, age, country of residence, program of choice, and school or DLI you received a letter of acceptance from. I know that a lot of people tend to go all out right away, but you don't want to go too far and run out of things to say in the other parts of your SOP. Think of it like a movie trailer or a summary of a book. Don't say more than you need to, use plain language, and get to the point quickly. Up next, give a brief summary of your academic and professional background. Include important details like your previous school and program, job titles, names of organizations where you've worked, and date of tenure. This part is about explaining how you've given thoughtful consideration to come here for studies and that your decision to study here is purposeful, not random, and is aligned with your future goals. The whole point of this section is to establish a connection between your past experiences and your chosen field of study in Canada. You're also showing the visa officer that you have the necessary knowledge and skills to succeed academically in Canada. This brings us to the next section, which is all about your purpose of study. Here you will elaborate on your decision to study in Canada over your home country or any other country. This is also where you bring up your program choice in school to explain how that will further your knowledge or career prospects back home. Again, the visa officer is trying to determine if you're a bona fide student and evidence that may prove that could be the following. Strong academic performance through transcripts, awards, certificates, and letters of recommendation. Letters from your current or previous employer, if any, that states your education in Canada can give you an advantage or promotion. 
or job posts that may require a certain level of education or prefer foreign education over local. Now, some questions you might want to reflect on when drafting this part could be, uh, number one, do you have a strong academic record that shows that you can handle studies in Canada? If not, what other ways can you show this? Does this program show progression in your education? How? If not, why take that route? Finally, is there a lengthy gap in your education history? If so, explain why you want to study in Canada at this time in your life. Now, while writing a letter can be intimidating, the process can be straightforward if you choose the right program. This can be quite challenging for some of you, especially if you plan on applying to several schools at once, each with their own set of requirements, intakes, and deadlines. So if this is an area you need help with, you can book an appointment with us or visit our website at canexvisa.com. After purpose of study, the next logical step is to provide details of your plans after studies. Give a clear, detailed picture of what you want to do with your career after program completion. To do this, you can talk about the specific career options or job prospects that you are likely to have after graduation, along with the estimated annual salaries for each. This part is pretty straightforward, so keep this section short and to the point. Proving this is a good indication that you will leave Canada once you complete your studies. Having family or work to go back to are typical ways to show this, but there are other options as well. For example, if you have a sick parent, knock on wood, uh, it would be helpful to bring a medical report that shows their condition. If you have investments, showing lease or mortgage agreements and financial assets like bank accounts, stocks, and bonds can show your intent to return. All right, the next thing to do is to show that you have enough money to sustain your plans of studying in Canada. I may need to dive deeper into this section since finances can be a deal breaker. This means if you don't have enough or can't prove you have enough, then your study permit application may be refused. In essence, you're required to have enough that will sustain your entire education, living and travel expenses without the need to work. While IRCC provides a minimum amount that you need to support yourself and your family, it's still encouraged to have more than this. To give you an idea, here's a basic breakdown for a single student with no family taking a two-year diploma program in a relatively affordable city in Canada. This is their total tuition, their total living expenses, their total travel expenses, and so the total cost of their education amounts to this much. Now, if you don't have something close to the required amount, you do have a couple options. Number one, wait until you have enough and then apply for a study permit. Or number two, see if you can find other resources to help you with your finances. For example, getting a family member or relative to sponsor your education. If there is someone else paying for your education, that person should also provide their bank statement along with a personal or legal statement. Take note, it's easier for a visa officer to believe that a direct family member, like your parents, are willing and capable of paying for your education. But if the person is unrelated to you, like a family friend, they must provide their bank statement and also a convincing personal statement of their motivations of why they wish to pay for your studies. I actually covered a case study similar to this situation, which you can watch somewhere on your screen. All right, let's say you don't have all the money, but will have the rest before you complete your studies. Then you can consider submitting your study permit application and write in your SOP how you will pay the remainder. As a basic example again, let's say the total cost of your education is this, but you only have this much. And so you're technically short by this much. If your parents work and they earn this much per year and is willing to cover your entire education, then they can write you a letter of financial support stating how they will be covering the rest of your expenses as you pursue studies in Canada. Okay, so now that you have enough money or will have enough money, the next thing to consider is how to prove this. Usually, you could present the following. Bank statements or certificates of at least four months, Proof of earnings like an employment contract stating your income, a guaranteed investment certificate, 
payment of tuition to your school, and a letter of financial support from a family member or sponsor. Other proof of funds are shown on the screen, and I've also linked a list of what IRCC considers to be proof of financial support, which I've linked in the description box below. Some final reminders for this part is to keep your paragraph simple and to the point, provide accurate numbers and details, and present them in a way that the visa officer can easily see everything. Anyway, here's a sample for reference. Up next, we have travel history. This is one way to show your track record of complying with immigration laws and proving that you have not overstayed your welcome in other countries. This shows the visa officer that you are more likely to comply with the requirements of your Canadian study permit. Passports with entry or exit stamps, itineraries, and even credit card statements can all serve as proof of travels. Here's a short sample projected on the screen. Last but not least, we have the closing statement. It's important to have a conclusion that ties up all your important points of argument in one paragraph. Towards the end, include a sentence with info on how to contact you directly, such as email or mobile number, so that IRCC can reach you if there are any issues with your application. Finally, end your letter with your name and signature. All right, let's cap this off with some final reminders. After writing your letter, don't forget to include an index table showing any supporting documents you will attach in your SOP. The whole point of this is making it easier for the visa officer to verify your documents to what you stated on your SOP. It also makes their job of assessing your application smoother and faster. Make sure to title your documents clearly and be mindful not to exceed the file limit of, I think, 4 megabytes so you can easily upload your documents on IRCC's online portal. And there you have it! That concludes today's video on how to write a letter of explanation. Guys, I spent a hefty amount of time researching, writing, filming, and editing this video. And so, if you found this video helpful or valuable at all, I would appreciate you sharing, liking, and subscribing to my channel. Anyway, I'll give you some time to digest all that info. But yeah, in the meantime, thanks again for watching. Be safe and be kind. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.